Today we are going to see the relationship between the hypertension and extraction and the guidelines that needs to be followed. So hypertension it is an abnormal elevation in the arterial pressure where the systolic blood pressure of 140 or more and diastolic blood pressure of 90 or more millimeter mercury it is termed as hypertension. Now we are just going to go through a quick recap of our third year that will be the causes of hypertension. So the causes can be primary or secondary. Primary can be because of any of these reasons and secondary basically is when there is an underlying problem. So that underlying problem can be coactation of aorta if it is drug induced or if there is chronic kidney disease, thyroid parathyroid disease, if the patient is on a prolonged use of the steroid therapy, sleep apnea. So these are the causes of hypertension. Next, we'll see about the signs and symptoms. So it can be early and if it is not treated on time, it can turn into advanced. So early signs and symptoms can be headache, dizziness, tinnitus, the retinal arterioles, they are affected, elevated blood pressure, palpitations, numbness. And if it is not treated, it is turning into the advanced stage. So these are just the signs and symptoms of hypertension. Moving towards the drugs which are used by the hypertensive patient and their oral side effects. So majority of the drugs will show dry mouth, lichenodes reaction, taste changes, angioedema of the face and the most commonly seen is with the calcium channel blocker that is gingival hyperplasia. Also you can see orthostatic hypotension with such hypertensive drugs. Now the next is the main part that we are going to see about the dental treatment modification that you need to do. So firstly, the patient should be evaluated properly. The changes that you need to do for the medication is if the patient is on calcium channel blockers, avoid using erythromycin and clarithromycin. Then avoid using prolonged NSAIDs. Anesthesia changes should be patient should not be used LA with epinephrine because epinephrine is a vasoconstrictor it will raise blood pressure more anxiety can lead to increase of epinephrine again stress management protocol should be followed and here excessive bleeding is possible but it is unlikely the next modification is about the appointment so here short and minimally stressful appointment should be given during the late mornings because the levels of epinephrine they are less blood pressure should be monitored regularly and if it is less than 180 110 then the dental treatment should be done sudden chair changes should be avoided as it can lead to orthostatic hypotension then you should have periodic monitoring of the blood pressure and emergency is if the patient is having hypertension there are high risk of myocardial infarction stroke and angina so all these complications and emergencies should be considered Lastly, we are seeing about the ASA grading and the dental management. If the patient is under grade 1, routine dental care is done. If it is under grade 2, then over here you are going to recheck the BP and you are going to see about the stress management protocols. Grade 3 is conscious sedation and avoid using epinephrine and medical care is done. And grade 4 is when only emergency care should be done and avoid using vasoconstrictor and medical reference is must. So that was all about it. Thank you so much.